right, boys and girls. Today we are going to be working with clay and a pencil, a piece of paper. You should always have a piece of paper or something underneath your clay and I'd like you to write your name on it. So my name is Miss Kroll and please make it legible. It means easily read. There it is, Miss Kroll. Write your name on it. I'm going to use a marker so you can see. Ms. Kroll. It's really important to write your name on the piece of paper or the plate that I give you so that when I get your work back in my office space, I'll know whose work is who whose work belongs to whom. All right, boys and girls, we are going to be making a snail today. So I don't think we need this much clay. So I'm gonna take a piece off. Before we start, I'd just like to show you some beautiful photographs of some snails. They're really charming. They're not slimy and gross. They've got that fantastic shell and the strangest little body that they can slip and slide over things. You can see their little eyes that look like antennas. They're really an interesting little creature. And of course they move very, very slowly. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoy these images as much as I do, but they're one of uh, the world's most precious little creatures. All right, boys and girls, I'd like to describe the anatomy of a garden snail. Up at the top, you can see some tentacles. Their eyes are actually up there. Of course, they have a head and the lower tentacles that stick out. They have a mouth. They have a foot that's called a foot, a tail, a mantle right in the center, of course their shell, and at the top of their shell is something called a whorl. Kind of like the word whorl, but it's with an O, W-H-O-R-L, whorl. All right, boys and girls. And what I'd like you to do is understand that you are, you are going to want to keep this piece of clay in one piece, not breaking it up into separate pieces. So it gets a little tricky. So what I'd like you to do is take your clay and roll it in your hands. And you can see it's turning out to look kind of like a tiny little cake, maybe a Twinkie or a ho-ho, and now it's getting thinner. Now it's more like a carrot. And what I'd like you to do is one end of the clay coil should taper so it's thinner than the other side. So I'm gonna roll it out longer. Luna. All right, now we're making a snail, and the snail has a body that is spiraled over. And you can see that I put a spiral on the camera here for you. And a lot of objects and creatures in nature have this coil. So do ferns and plants. So, boys and girls, now that I have this coil, all right, boys and girls, after you've rolled your clay into a coil, this is called a coil, and you've tapered one end down, so you press one end a little harder down than the other. So this is thicker, this is thinner. Take the thin part of the coil and start to spiral it around and around and press it up against itself. Now I'm using a different clay than what you are using, so your clay is going to stick together better than mine but you'll get the idea. So it's going around and around and around and around and around. 
Now you can do this sitting up because you might not want to flatten this side down. And then what you have, I'm so sorry it's so bright. I think you can see it better when I do that. There we go. It's almost too dark though. Huh, there we go. So boys and girls, now this will be the shell that coils around like a spiral. And this part, you can kind of flatten down on your desktop and you can get the bottom nice and flat. So your little snail can kind of slide his little body on the tabletop and you just flatten the edge down. Now I don't want his head hanging so low so I'm going to lift his head up. Maybe I'll shape this end more like a face. Before I do that I could take a I could take this pencil and kind of push in the middle of it to make those nice little antennas that he has. Or, you know, some people like to just use their scissors and press, but that's not as safe. Now, I'm going to pull these apart and make my little antennas for my little critter here. Some people like to make those into little eyeballs, you know, at the ends of those. I actually think there's a second set down here that the eyes move around. These are the, might be the antennas. They might be the eyes. I really have to look up those two body parts on a snail. So I'll put them up there for you to see. And you can see his body kind of flattens out on the edges so he has you know that little surface that the little snail can slide over leaves and plants and branches to eat parts of the leaves or the cellulose and here's his little face you can pinch his back end to make more of that soft slidey surface so that your snail can kind of scooch around and mine isn't sticking together all that well because my clay isn't as, um, it has a different feel than the one you have. I just have this at home so I can show you things. So, boys and girls, maybe you want these to have, whoops, maybe you want the eyes to be on these antennas. Maybe you want to pinch and pull to have those little tiny antennas down here. Maybe those are the eyes. I should learn more about snails. They're just a really neat little critter. And you can use your pencil. And you can make the eyes up here. You can make them down here. I'm going to make a little cute little face to give them some personality. You could take your pencil and make designs on the shell. Maybe lines or dots or hearts, or stars, or flowers. I mean, really, anything goes in art, right? And you could have him twist his face to face you out, outward. That's cute. Or his face could go, be going straight forward. Hello, little guy. Oh, he's cute. On this side, I could do the same design, or I could change my design into stripes dashes or lines. A pencil is a really nice tool to use inside of clay to make marks and then later we'll paint these. This is a clay that you'll have to fire. That means I have to bake it basically in my high 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 baking kiln for clay. And here is my little snail with the antennas and those little eye antennas, I think. <laughs> His little head can turn, decide how you want him to turn, or maybe straight forward. And he has that really flat, strange, leafy-like body beneath him. And there we go, little snail. All right, boys and girls, simple objectives. One piece of clay. We are going to create a spiral to make a little snail. I'll fire them and we'll paint them. Thank you boys and girls.